Lacey and I'm from the Chattanooga Public Library and today we are going to have a very special history and art video for you. So this video is going to be about LGBTQI plus artists throughout history and we are going to be taking those artists and being inspired by them to create other pieces of artwork. So this video and this activity is so important because June is National Pride Month. So June was picked for Pride Month because of the Stonewall Uprising that occurred in 1969. So this happened in the early hours of June 28, 1969, when the police raided the Stonewall Inn. This later led to a week-long protest, speaking up for LGBTQI plus rights. So now, present day, we celebrate Pride every year in June. So for this video specifically, we are going to be inspired by famous LGBTQI artists throughout history and taking some of their works and being inspired to create our own. It'll start off with Rachel and I doing two works inspired by two artists. And then later on, we're going to have some amazingly special guests to do the same sort of activity. So I hope you enjoy and here we go. Yay. I'm Rachel and we're with the Chattanooga Public Library. And today for our history activity, we are going to be talking about LGBTQI artists and doing an example that is inspired by some of their artwork. So we're gonna go over some supplies that you might need and then we're gonna do the activity. And while we do the activity, Rachel and I are gonna give you some art history facts. And by the end, we will have an amazing piece of art inspired by some very famous artists. Sound good? Yeah, let's go. All right. All right, so some supplies that you might need, it's gonna differ from each artist that we're gonna be talking about. So I'm going to be doing a piece of artwork inspired by Robert Rauschenberg. And so I gathered a lot of different colors of acrylic paints. I have a canvas, I have some fabric that I hand dyed. And then I also have this little skull that I was gonna add into uh, my piece of artwork. So Rachel, what do you have? So I'm going to be making an artwork based off of the work of David Hockney, and he is known for lots of big colors um, and kind of landscapes, especially later on in his work. Um, so I've got my watercolor paper here and I've got my watercolors because, um, yeah, that's going to be our, our big, beautiful colors. So Awesome. So I think that we should go ahead and get started on our pieces of artwork and as we start to kind of see ours come together and we can talk about our artist, uh, then I think it'll help inspire us a little bit. Sound good? Yeah. David Hockney is a British artist who works in a variety of mediums, including printmaking, portraits, and photo collages, but is most well known for his paintings. He was an important contributor to the pop art movement of the 60s and helped found the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles. He's considered one of the most influential British artists of the 20th century. Robert Rauschenberg was an American artist who focused mostly on painting, sculptures, and collages. In the early 50s, he found his niche with his red painting series and created the art form known as combines. He incorporated newspapers, found objects, paints, skulls, and stuffed animals to create this new art form. Rauschenberg was an important part of the pop art movement in the late 50s and 60s. In the late 1980s, he created the Rauschenberg Overseas Cultural Exchange. The exchange was created to broaden cultural ties across the world in various art forms. All right, guys, I absolutely love my piece that's inspired by Robert Rauschenberg. Rachel, how did yours turn out? I think I'm going to go back and add a few more details later, but you know, I am satisfied with it being a starting point. Awesome. Hi, my name is Chase Baltz. I am a queer artist living in Memphis, Tennessee, um, though I was raised in Chattanooga. 
Uh, today I am focusing on Hannah Hook as my artist. Uh, she was a Dadaist from 1920s Berlin. Uh, she was one of the only females within the movement and she was also a bisexual. Um, I'm inspired by her because Dadaism was a complete disregard for the traditional values of the Western world at the time and used the elements of photo montage to kind of do radical juxtapositions to show the kind of farce of class and hierarchy and race within society um, and sexuality and gender, um, which applies to a lot of what's going on right now um, in our world, so yeah. All right, so next special guest, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Z. I'm a queer artist from Chattanooga, Tennessee, living in New Orleans. And the artist I chose is Jean-Michel Basquiat. He was an artist most well known for his neo-expressionist paintings and graffiti um, that focused on class differences, uh, power structures, and who drew a lot of inspiration from the human form. I was inspired by his use of um, of anatomy in his in his artwork so I wanted to make something that utilized that as well. I um, teach structural engineering and um, a lot of that is you know how we make structures that mimic things in nature um, and other forms of biomimicry and because Basquiat had such an interest um, and drew a lot of inspiration from the human form um, but as he used um, used paintings I, I instead am going to use sculpture. Which I think is the coolest thing ever! It's gonna be the best. All right so I am just beyond belief excited to see that. And I will be doing a piece inspired by Edie Fake, who is an American artist, illustrator, author, and transgender activist. Fake is known for comics, zines, ink paintings, and murals. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started and can't wait to see the final products. And we'll have some conversation throughout, but let's get going. Ready? Yeah. Come on. Sure. Um, <laughs> It's like the magic school bus. Yep. What? So are we are we starting right now? Yep. Okay. All right. Cool. I've never made a artwork over a webcam with a group of people before. <laughs> Welcome to the future, Chase. <laughs> Hannah Hoch was a German artist who pioneered the form of photo montage in the early 20th century. She was the only female member of the Data movement known for its incisive political satire of Germany after the end of World War I. Hawke's collages critique pop culture of her time by repurposing mainstream media into evocative avant-garde images. Like since it's photo montage, um, that was like the medium that uh, Anna chose, like I'm doing something like collage based, but I'm taking a lot of my old pieces of artwork, like print, prints that I, screen prints that I've done and other collage work and I'm recutting it up and reusing it. I love that. I mean, you mentioned that on the phone today and I was totally living for it because I have a hard time like destroying something that I've made, even if I don't love it, you know? Yeah, it's true. It's sentimentality and like nostalgia or yeah, sentiment sentimentality and nostalgia can be really a dangerous thing for the human mind. Yeah, I also, I mean, I like doing this too. Like, it's like a nice experiment because it's like, I don't really want to destroy the things that I've made, but like, that's also a kind of a cool conceptual life lesson to like, learning okay. how to like make something new from old things. Yeah. It's also interesting to think about art as in like the means like the me different modes of creating art and then how they like travel between cultures the fastest i think like in the past visual art was the fastest moving thing because we live in a visual society we use our eyes to first judge or see anything um, but nowadays with like so much information on the internet i kind of and with the thing of the internet i kind of wonder if like music and writing are starting to come more to the forefront now. Um, I guess since the internet is so based in the visual, it's like kind of an overload to like sift through it all.
So I was talking to a friend the other day um, who lives out in Arkansas, who's this queer farmer, they're amazing. Um, and we have like these really great discussions. Uh, but they said something to me uh, today on the phone. They use the word queer in terms of just as a way of living and experiencing their life. And that kind of thing has like stuck with me because it means that it is like in so many different facets, like even though I identify as a, like a, a cis man, it's like, but wait, there's a whole spectrum of gender that doesn't even have to do about sex. It could just be about like the both masculine, feminine, and then the like intersexual dimensions of gender. And it's just like, so crazy to me to think that that's how we could be living our lives if brought up in a different society where, you know, homophobia and transphobia didn't exist. Like we could be more fully who we were meant to be as humans. It's something to think of. I mean, you'd be, there are like uh, a lot of different changes or like even these like little changes that could throw off the trajectory of like in your entire like life and who you are now and who you become. So even if it's like you're at this like 90 degree angle and like one degree changes, like you could be like if that degree was like whenever you were born and being brought up and all during all these like really formative years in your life then like um yeah i mean it's, it's it makes a huge difference um it's also kind of curious to think though is like if at any stage that because like humans have the ability to learn at any moment in their life yeah it doesn't matter what stage your brain is at unless you have like an unfortunate degenerative disease but like you know like as like a cis male talking about gender for the first time in my life and really trying to like analyze like the binary role that I've been been put into as a man and it's like I see like from American society how it has like almost repressed like it's like taught me that I need to repress all of my emotions like as a man. And so it's like, I, you know, deal with anger and I deal with a lot of walls that I put up around intimacy and stuff. And it's just like, I can't help but have a little fantastical wonderment about what life would be like. Um, and not so much as in like a regretful way or a wistful way, but just more as like a conceptual way of thinking. And then wondering how my life will evolve if I keep practicing to think about it. Yeah, it's like, even if you make these um, little adjustments right now, um, like your, um, what is it? Like, you know, you change your behavior, like the surroundings are going to like follow. And it's like, even like these little things, it's like your thought and then your thoughts and your behavior and your actions will follow or, or whatever. But, um, but yeah, like these changes can be made now too. And like, that's going to adjust like the trajectory of like the rest of your life for like however long until you make another change and another adjustment so on and so forth. And that's the thing too, is that like, once you realize that there's not really an end goal to life, that life is just about like living and fluctuating and experiencing new things and trying to always learn, mm -hmm. it's like, life can be really beautiful like and that's another thing is like life's also not going to be just easy fun beautiful all the time like it definitely comes with like hardships and fear but it's like learning to lean in like those moments where you really lean into joy and beauty like you need to lean into the moments of fear and uncertainty just as hard because they teach you things um and you know and those like mental health issues can like end up like they don't just stay in one place like you end up having issues with like your physical body that's like reacting and like responding and literally manifest the like emotional damage or yeah that you have it's crazy but yeah it's like you a lot of times can feel stuck in a situation and um but you're just doing the same thing thing over and over again and it's like okay maybe I change my I don't know it's like a tricky ooh that is a really good word it's a 
thank you process of like changing the belief and the thought and the behavior um I don't know I think it, it's all just like you have to be constantly aware of yourself like all in in the way that you respond and react to the world around you and make a habit out of that An American artist of Puerto Rican and Haitian descent, Jean-Michel Basquiat was best known for his graffiti-inspired street art. He revolutionized the neo-expressionist movement with his giant, vibrant murals that offered social commentary on the Black community of the 70s and 80s. He also collaborated with rap artists of the time, combining art with lyrics to create haunting epigrams. On camera, this is looking really cool. Oh uh, yeah, it looks great. How's, how's, how's it going on, on y'all's end? Let's just do a check-in, an art check-in. I'm trying to figure out how to make this into more of just like more of an arm. Oh, that's so cool. That hand is killer. <laughs> Thank you. It can... It, it works pretty well. There's a marshmallow. Okay. Oh my god. Yeah. Hit the camera. <laughs> Hit the camera! <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh my god, it's good. Spot on. <laughs> Spot on. Great aim. Great aim. Y'all, this is like helping my emotions on a very lovely level. Good. So thank you. Like, and I, go ahead, sorry. Oh, I was going to say, like, the conversation, but also, like, just being, doing, like, inspiring things <laughs> with my you friend. Know, it's cool, too, because, like, you know, we're all queer, and we're all, like, kind of working through our relationships, and we're talking about queer artists, and it's Pride Month, so I feel like this is probably... Also, in the span of history of ever celebrating Pride, this is the first Pride that I think actually matters. Um, it's about protesting. It's about fighting for rights in a better world, like a cool. Yeah. So I'm glad we're around doing our work and talking about these things. It's so important. Mm -hmm. Edie Fake is an American painter who specializes in geometric gouache and ink murals. They remain a huge influence in the queer art revolution and draw inspiration from the art deco and modernism movements. Fake also published an award-winning comic zine, as well as two other fully illustrated books. See, whatever you're doing right now looks really awesome and it kind of looks like pasta. It is pasta. Oh my God, is it? It is, yeah. So I was, I've been making this bridge out of pasta for like, hours and like I was like you know what uh because I glue each side and I was like this kind of looks like a bone like I was thinking that earlier and I was like why don't I just use the glue and the pasta to make a bone so I like literally looks like a bone trying to mold it <laughs> oh <laughs> that is brilliant I am living for the ingenuity <laughs> that's going on here it just takes a lot of patience to like let it set and then dry and this and that but that's fine that's fine i am realizing the amount of patience that my artist must have working in perspective and fine line and <laughs> oh. uh. Keith, what's your process in like collaging um, so, yeah, like I said, I'm cutting up a lot of my previous artwork, and I actually had, like, a old collage from a friend that got a little damaged, um, but I didn't want to throw it away, so I'm actually cutting out that collage that my friend made for me, too. Um, but I've been cutting out just different elements from all of these things that I like, um, while trying to keep the kind of, like, political discourse alive within the work um, and right now I've got the elements that I like and now I'm kind of 
arranging them into shapes on the, the final like standing around for the new the new image. Mm -hmm. So do you like go into a collage piece like having like an end goal in mind or um, more of like trial and error? It's very much more trial and error, which I kind of like because it's like, um, like in the sense of not having a goal in mind because a lot of it's like, a lot of it feels like a little bit of like stream of consciousness to do. Um, but that also kind of plays into the idea that I'm like using, reusing old work and stuff. So it's like taking old things and then making something new out of them and like reconstructing and like re like. Like a re renaissance? <laughs> it's yes. a rebirth? Rebirth. Um, so yeah, I don't really, I don't really try too much to think too hard about a collage other than like maybe color palette or certain shapes I'll be looking for. But other than that, no, not too much planning. Okay. That makes sense. And also I just, yeah, I, I love the idea of like, cause we, like we as people were constantly changing, right? And so that means that our art is also going to be constantly changing. So taking something and making it new and fresh and more representative is a really awesome concept. You know, it's all just like a puzzle, really. It's like a game. It's shape, form, color. It's fun. Is that um, what they say in art school? It's like a big game. game. How's it going, Z? It's going all right. Uh, it's taking a lot of patience. <laughs> All right, guys, so I think that we have pretty much wrapped up with our inspiration pieces. So Chase and Z, how did it go on your end? Great. Uh, it kind of turned into something that uh, I wasn't expecting, actually, because initially I was just inspired by the artist himself. And then it kind of turned into uh, the piece being modeled by something like one of his pieces of art in particular. Um, so yeah, that was pretty cool. So um, Chase, how'd it go on your end? Uh, it went really well, actually. I mean, you know, when you asked me to do this, it's like I kind of had to refresh myself on a little bit of history, um, even though that Dadaism and Hannah Hook is one of my favorites. But uh, within the research, it's just like, you know, the more you started to learn about Dada is that they kind of, at certain points, appropriated images from other cultures as a way to counterculture Nazism um, in Germany, um, which brings into a lot of questions. It's like, of course, the artwork was kind of going against this uh, dictatorship, this authoritarian regime that was, you know, not only killing Jews, but killing uh, trans people and people of color um, and women. Um, so it's like important that that's brought up, the fact that they did appropriate from other cultures, um, but then that brings into larger things of questions about like the Western art world and what is lost and what is gained when we take from other cultures. So I just kind of like started thinking about that when I was making my piece. Um, so yeah, I kind of like made a piece on the idea of stealing from other cultures or like, you know, and uh, kind of shifting back the reappropriation to where those things kind of came as a form of resistance, like a reappropriation. Um, so yeah, it went well. But, uh, <laughs> I love that. And I love that um, these really big picture ideas and topics can come out of, you know, a quick uh, art or it doesn't have to always be quick, you know, sometimes it can be very long, but out of um, being inspired by another artist. And so it can really just like help us um, 
expand our minds personally from art history. And I, I love that idea. So in my uh, research to kind of refresh my memory about Hannah Hook, I came across some interesting stuff. Um, in Berlin in August of 2016, an art exhibition was put on uh, entitled Dada Africa, which um, showcased how the Dada's movement took from other cultures, specifically African cultures, to kind of make a statement against Nazi Germany and a statement against the ideas of Western beauty. So that led me down another rabbit hole and found a contemporary black American artist named Adam Pendleton, um, who is a multimedia artist focusing on painting, silkscreen, collage, video, and performances. Um, his work uh, is, you know, trying to create new historical threads so that we can get new considerations of experiences of shock and displacement within marginalized communities. Um, and, you know, there's the bigger question of recontextualization and reanalyzing these appropriations that have happened throughout history within the Western art world and by white artists. Um, and I bring this up just solely in solidarity with the, the current state of the world and the Black Lives Matter movement. And Well, thank you guys so much for participating in this video and watching and happy Pride Month to everyone. Yeah, if you decide to take inspiration from one of the artists we have discussed or even research more LGBTQIA artists of your own um, and decide to make an artwork based off of one of their stuff, please, please feel free to tag or take a picture and tag us on social media so we can see your lovely, lovely creations. Yes, we would love to see them. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.